since the dawn of time, humanity has been having the same debate over and over again. That being is Die Hard a Christmas movie, all while completely overlooking Die Hard 2. Just like the original, Die Hard 2 is also set on Christmas Eve, and even ends with the classic Christmas song Let It Snow. In fact, Die Hard 2 is probably even more Christmassy than its predecessor, because it actually features snow along with some winter wonderland scenery. So why is it that we can argue and debate till the cows come home whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie, while ignoring its sequel? Well, because, sadly, Die Hard 2 didn't quite have the same effect as its predecessor. Released in 1990, it sees Bruce Willis return as John McClane, as he waits at an airport for his wife to return on an incoming flight. When lo and behold, the airport gets taken over by terrorists, led by the Grim Reaper from Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, where they shut off the airport's communication with all incoming airplanes, leaving Holly McClane stranded in a plane, in a plot to free an evil drug lord dictator. Oh yes, and in case it wasn't enough like the original, even Walter Peck returns, along with a cameo by Reginald Vell Johnson as Sergeant Al Powell. In this sequel, in which the Japanese poster reminds us, this time he has shoes. The gag of Die Hard 2 is how can the same thing happen to the same man all over again? But I think that's kind of the movie's weakness. It's exactly the same movie all over again. It's Die Hard, only it's not set in the Nakatomi Plaza, but this time it's in an airport. Hence, Die Hard 2 often gets overshadowed by its popular predecessor and popular successor, Die Hard with a Vengeance, leaving the otherwise mundane film sandwiched in between two movie classics. But is Die Hard 2 all that bad? Have we been too harsh to it? And could it just be misunderstood? Well, today, let's find out as we look into 10 things that you may not know about Die Hard 2. So, let's check it out. Number 10, based on a novel. So naturally, given that Die Hard was such a huge hit, it seemed a given that a sequel would ensue to further explore the action-packed adventures of John McClane. And just like the original Die Hard movie, which was based on a book called Nothing Lasts Forever, Die Hard 2 is also based on a book. This time, the novel used for the backstory was 58 Minutes, a book written by Walter Wagger. Published in 1987, one year before the release of the original Die Hard, like Die Hard 2, it tells the story of a cop caught up in a terrorist siege at an airport as he waits for a loved one to arrive who is stuck flying over a head with only 58 minutes worth of fuel left, hence the book's title, 58 Minutes. And of course, there are some differences between book and movie. For example, in Die Hard 2, the airport is Washington International Airport. And in 58 minutes, it's set in the JFK International New York Airport. And obviously, the cop in 58 minutes isn't John McClane, but a character called Frank Malone. And in an ironic twist, like Nothing Lasts Forever, the original story the first Die Hard is based on, the cop in question this time, aka Frank Malone, is a divorced cop who wasn't meeting up with his wife, but his daughter. Yep, in 58 minutes, it's his daughter stuck in the plane, and not Holly McClane. With all these stories the Die Hard movies are based on revolving around daughters being in trouble, with their police officer fathers needing to save them, it's no wonder John McClane's daughter was eventually written into the series more in later installments. Number 9. Overlapping Projects With the original Die Hard director John McTiernan not returning for the sequel, 20th Century Fox and producer Joel Silver had to find a new director to take on the explosive task of bringing Die Hard 2 onto the big screen. And the director they went with was Finnish director Rennie Harlin, who was an uprising director at the time, having previously just directed A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, which many consider to be the most ambitious Nightmare on Elm Street movie in terms of special effects and set pieces, which probably got him the job for Die Hard 2. However, by the time Harlan got to work on Die Hard 2, he hadn't quite finished working on his previous project, The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. 
which itself would go on to become a comedy classic. So in the early days of directing Die Hard 2, Harlan was also editing The Adventures of Ford Fairlane. And what didn't help is that both Die Hard 2 and The Adventures of Ford Fairlane had shortened post-production stages, and both movies were released a month apart from one another, which is proof of how the two projects overlapped. Number 8. Tagline or Movie Title Something I've noticed over the years with Die Hard 2 is the ambiguity over the movie's title, as it's often referred to as Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Officially in the movie's intro and production notes, it's simply Die Hard 2. I think the confusion started with the movie's theatrical poster, in which we see the tagline, Die Harder. It's huge and takes up a heap of poster space, and it's the first thing that catches your eye when you see the poster, making the Die Harder sentence be a prominent part of Die Hard 2's marketing. Then when other posters followed it, it appeared that Die Harder wasn't just a tagline, but part of the movie's actual title. And the VHS releases don't help either, as some regions titled the movie as Die Hard 2, whereas others clearly called it Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Then, when released on DVD, it was released as Die Hard 2, Die Harder. And then, when the Special Edition DVD came out, it was still Die Hard 2, Die Harder. But when another Special Edition came out, it went back to being called simply Die Hard 2. But then, when the Blu-ray of that very Special Edition was released, like some kind of sick joke hell-bent on confusing us all, it went back to being called Die Hard 2, Die Harder. Ay 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 ay, pick a title already, guys. But I find that when you talk to fans, they simply refer to it as Die Hard 2. So what is the movie's title? Is it Die Hard 2 or Die Hard 2 Die Harder? And if it's the latter, could this be a strange case where a movie's tagline actually altered a movie and changed its title? Seriously, people are so hell-bent on having their Is Die Hard a Christmas Movie debate that they have completely overlooked the debate as to what Die Hard 2's real name is. Number 7, John Leguizamo cut to size. So naturally in Die Hard 2, there is a new string of bad guys for McLean to sort out. Some of whom are played by famous or would be famous actors, including Robert Patrick and John Amos. However, one actor who briefly shows up in the movie is John Leguizamo, who was originally set to have a much larger role in the film. But when he arrived on set, upon inspection, the film crew felt that he was too short. So his role in the movie was cut down. Leguizamo himself claims that his part was cut down to him just saying one line. And even that itself was dubbed by a voice actor. All systems tap, Colonel. With the brilliant actor really coming up short in the Die Hard franchise, no pun intended. That's silly, because if you see Leguizamo in Spawn or Romeo and Juliet, you see he actually makes a brilliant and menacing villain. So it's a shame that they didn't let him flourish in Die Hard 2. Number 6. Set in the same universe as Commando. One year before the original Die Hard came out, Lethal Weapon hit theatres, and like Die Hard, it's an action-packed Christmas movie, and both movies were produced by Joel Silver. In fact, I always wanted to believe that the Lethal Weapon and Die Hard movies exist within the same universe. A Silververse, if you will. However, those dreams were sadly dashed in Die Hard 2, when a magazine article about Lethal Weapon could be seen in a sort of blink and you'll miss it easter egg, suggesting that Lethal Weapon is a movie within Die Hard's universe. However, Lethal Weapon aside, there is in fact evidence to suggest that the Die Hard movies and the 1986 Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Commando have a shared universe, as Die Hard 2's main villain, Drug Lord General Raymond Esperanza is a dictator from the fictional country of Valverde, which just so happens to be the same name as the country John Matrix is instructed to kill the president in Commando, where he instead leads a one-man war into killing all the bad guys. In Commando, we learn that Valverde is an 11-hour flight from LA, and in addition to that, like the first two Die Hard movies, Commando was also produced by Joel Silver and written by Stephen E. De Sosa. And in addition to that, the novelization of Predator explains that the country in which the action is taking place is Valverde. And once again, Predator was produced by Joel Silver. My fan theory of the Silververse intensifies. 
Number five, video game. Yes, we all know about the Die Hard NES game, but Die Hard 2 also got its very own video game, and no, I don't mean that Die Hard trilogy game that ended up being released either. An actual video game solely focusing on the second installment in the Die Hard series. And what is weird is that no one ever mentions this game, and probably don't even know about it for that matter. Which is a shame, as it's a fairly decent video game, and way superior to the original NES efforts. Die Hard 2 the video game puts the player as John McClane in a first-person shoot-em-up, where you have to shoot the terrorists at the airport, which is fun enough and gives the game an arcade film. Later in the game, you're also skiing while shooting bad guys too. The final level has you on the wing of a plane killing off the villains. In all honesty, it's not a bad game. It lacks background music, but other than that, I think it's good. So why didn't it catch on? Well, probably because it was a PC game for computer softwares. Maybe had it been released on a Nintendo or Sega system, it would have received more attention. But who knows, it's still an enjoyable little lost gem. Number four, The Search for Snow. Director Rennie Harlan would go on to call Die Hard 2's shoot a nightmare, citing one major issue with making the movie was searching for snowy locations. Certain parts of the film were meant to be filmed in Washington during the winter, but when the crew turned up to location, the weather was surprisingly warm for winter weather, hence there was no snow. So the production would travel up northwest to search for locations, only to have the snow melted by the time they arrived. So frequently while filming, fake snow would have to be used. And in a weird twist of irony, many sheets of fake snow had been set on location in Colorado, only for the on-set location to be hit by a blizzard, which caused Die Hard 2's production to temporarily shut down. Number three, TV redubs. Often when movies with many cuss words were shown on TV back in the day, it would require many of the offensive words to be removed via overdubbing different words. The most famous case is probably Scarface, from when that movie was shown on TV. And Die Hard 2 is no exception. When the movie was shown on TV station TBS, the movie's bad language had to be dubbed out, with voice actors delivering different dialogue, covering the original bad language. Colonel Stewart, can we have a few words please? You can have two, Joe and you. However, what made Die Hard 2 more notorious is many viewers felt that the voice actors that were chosen didn't exactly sound like the original actors, to say the least. What sets off the metal detectors first? The lead in your hand or the junk in your brains? Making the movie feel awkward with badly placed voice overdubs standing out like a sore thumb. Hey, forget Monday morning. My wife saw one of those damn planes these guys are fooling with. That puts me on the playing field. And what's even more bizarre is that when McLean does his famous catchphrase in the movie's climax, he says, yippee ki -yay, Mr. Falcon. yippee ki -yay, Mr. Falcon. I have no idea what that means, but damn it, I want yippee ki -yay, Mr. Falcon printed on a t-shirt. Number two, Bruce Willis wanted to kill off John McLean in Die Hard 2. Yep, as blasphemous as that sounds, Bruce Willis actually wanted his popular character that everyone loves to be killed off in Die Hard 2. During the filming of Die Hard 2, Willis gave an interview with Entertainment Tonight, and when asked if there would be a Die Hard 3, he said, no, I don't think so, and expressed how he wanted McClane to die in the franchise's second outing, and how the studio refused. Now, it could be seen that Willis was talking in jest, but he did further add, what else could you possibly do with the character of John McClane after two movies? The irony being is that there are now five Die Hard movies with a sixth one frequently being discussed. It's all pretty much thanks to Die Hard with a Vengeance, which took the franchise into a different direction and showed that you can do more with John McClane other than the whole man being in the wrong place at the wrong time shtick. Number one, Sued Hard. Although Die Hard 2 tried to once again unleash the Christmas joy with guns and explosions, 
the Black & Decker company weren't having a bar of the John McClane festive joy, as the company paid for some product placement to be used in the film, in which a scene was filmed where John McClane uses a Black & Decker cordless drill. The only problem is the scene in question was cut from the final film, to which Black & Decker sued 20th Century Fox in a case that was settled out of court. What's interesting about this particular behind-the-scenes drama is the Black & Decker Die Hard 2 court case was the first ever product placement lawsuit associated with a film, which I guess is kind of an achievement. So what went wrong with Die Hard 2? Why is it that Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance are considered action movie classics, whereas Die Hard 2 is considered meh? Well, I reckon that's because Die Hard and Die Hard with a Vengeance tried something different. They pushed boundaries and were their own film. Whereas I think Die Hard 2 plays for safe and tries to stick to being as much like the original Die Hard as possible. I think that hurt the movie and set it up for people to instantly compare it to the first one, which is a terrible thing as the first one is a flawless film. So I think Die Hard 2 would have worked better had they done something completely different rather than just do a rehash of the first movie. But that said though, it is a fun and enjoyable movie. It's basically Looney Tunes with explosions and gunshots. And just because it's not as good as Die Hard or Die Hard with a Vengeance, it doesn't make it a bad film. So take it for what it is. A light piece of popcorn entertainment. Anyway, I'm Minty, and yippee-ki-yay, Mr. Falcon. Hey guys, so this week I did a poll on the Minty Comedic Arts Facebook page and I asked people, what is the true name of Die Hard 2? Is it Die Hard 2 or Die Hard 2 Die Harder? And out of 323 votes, you can see here that 34% said it was Die Hard 2 and 66% say that it's Die Hard 2 Die Harder. So I guess it seems pretty conclusive that in the popular opinion, the movie's title is Die Hard 2 Die Harder. Well, at least it is in my fan base anyway. Thank you everyone for taking part and until next time, stay fresh.